Greetings, dear brothers and sisters, in the holy, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Once again, to Messiah and Messiah alone, be all the praise, honor, and glory. And today is the 18th day, right, Anna? Yes. Right, David? Yes. Yeah, today is the 18th day of the first month, of course, of the new year. We are in 2018 now. It's 18 days past. Dear brothers and sisters, once again we have gathered in the holy name of our Messiah, trusting his word, which Messiah himself promises in Matthew 18, 20. That where two or three gather in my name, I will be there in the midst of them. Dear brothers and sisters, let us hold on to our Lord's promise today as we gather together to have a fellowship, to worship, to glorify God. Together, as David has a cover sheet for us today, and of course we are going to use the karaoke, dear brothers and sisters. Our five-year-old son, David, has the cover sheet, and both Anna, our eight-year-old daughter, and our five-year-old son, David, will be singing, using the karaoke for Lord, I offer you my life, or Lord, I offer my life to you, rather. Excuse me. So, dear brothers and sisters, we definitely, definitely do encourage you dear brothers and sisters to please do join us because sometimes we fail to realize the bible says that this is the day the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it isn't that amazing dear brothers and sisters that this is indeed the day the lord has made for you and me we oftentimes fail to realize we oftentimes can't get to rejoice and be glad in it because we do indeed stay in a broken, broken, broken world. Every single minute, every single nanosecond rather, we would, I would say that we are being bombarded with all the fiery doubts of the enemy. Dear brothers and sisters, yes, the enemy is real, but the enemy is weak. And that's what the enemy doesn't want us to know. But when we come in, Messiah's presence only the enemy is weak because the Bible says that you will show me the paths of life in your presence is fullness of joy in his at your right hand are pleasures forevermore dear brothers and sisters that's a declaration that in his presence only there is fullness of joy in his presence we are powerful in his presence we have the deliverance, dear brothers and sisters. No matter whatever you have been through, however your day has been, however your week has been, whatever your expectations has not been met, or whatever the enemy has been trying to throw at you with, with your guilt or heartache or whatever valley you are going through today, dear brothers and sisters, in his presence, in his presence only, there will be fullness of joy. So today, dear brothers and sisters, as we gather in his holy name, let's get together once again. Let's hold hands. Let's read the scriptures. Let's have a fellowship. Let's worship him, dear brothers and sisters. As Paul says, not to forsake the assembling of ourselves in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25. That's what Paul says, that we should be assembling and having a fellowship together and glorifying God as we see the day is approaching because the day is indeed upon us. Nothing has changed, dear brothers and sisters. We need to view it from our Messiah's lens and we need to keep having, worshipping Him. We need to keep having this fellowship together so that we can be strong in Messiah. We can fight this good fight which the enemy doesn't want. So we do encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, today to join us Whatever you are in, if you have stumbled or stumbled on to this video, this is not a coincidence. Because in his house, there are no coincidences, there are no accidents. In Messiah's house, there are no coincidences, there are no accidents, dear brothers and sisters. You are here by a divine appointment, whatever you're going through. Perhaps, perhaps the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God has a streamlined answer for you. It may not be what you are expecting, but it may be much bigger, much higher, much more magnified answer than what you are expecting. So let us today just invite the presence of God. Let us just read some scriptures so that the scriptures can renew our minds, dear brothers and sisters, as we were, as we were telling the other day that as 2018 started, 
the Lord had been leading Anna and David, so they every day come up with some scripture. Like today is 1:18. So David was telling today about 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. It's an amazing way, I believe, to dwell on one scripture and with the date, which is going to know that way we can dwell on that scripture. And of course, dear brothers and sisters, we as the Lord led us to start our every day with Messiah Yeshua. We do dwell on one scripture on that as well every single day. So if you have if the Lord has been leading you to be a part of that journey, it's excellent, dear brothers and sisters. Let's armor up the word of God is the sword of the spirit. So today, First Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So dear brothers and sisters, the cross, the message of the cross is the power of God today. That same power as Ephesians chapter 1 verses 16 through 21. Paul tells us the same power which raised Messiah from death. So today let's get in his presence as we talk about worshipping dear brothers and sisters. Today let's take a look what the Bible says about worship. Psalm chapter 29 Verses 1 through 2 says, Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Your brothers and sisters, the scripture commands us to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Perhaps, dear brothers and sisters, it might be worthwhile at, at this time to just understand what this word worship really means. Because oftentimes we don't get to the dictionary to check, check all the meanings because we have this habit of understanding or we know the meaning as such. We know what it means, but we don't have the dictionary meaning of it. So what I did was I looked up in the dictionary meaning of worship. The noun form, the noun worship, noun form of worship is a reverence offered to a divine being or to deity. It's also an act of expressing such reverence, honor or respect, felt or shown, profound, adoring and awed respect. Perhaps that doesn't make it very clear, does it? Basically, worship is an act that demonstrates that we value something, we revere something, or it is the process of showing that something is of worth to us. As we see, dear brothers and sisters, this act of reverence, this act of all, all across the scriptures. As a matter of fact, only in the New Testament we see, and it's worthwhile, dear brothers and sisters, to note it down. We are mentioning few scriptures as the Lord led us. Maybe you can go back and dwell on those scriptures. In the New Testament itself, we see few scriptures Regarding worship, where worshiping God in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, John chapter 4, verses 21 through 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 25, Revelation chapter 4, verse 10, Revelation chapter 5, verse 14, Revelation chapter 7, verse 11, Revelation chapter 11, verse 16. Revelation chapter 22 verse 9. Of course, the list is unending, but we will stop. We have to stop somewhere. <laughs> I'm kidding. Dear brothers and sisters, it's, we wish we could have read all the scriptures due to the interest of time. We probably won't be able to, but dear brothers and sisters, we do encourage you. We highly recommend you, as a matter of fact, to please do go back. Be an active variant, dig in the scriptures, ask the Lord what he has. Maybe he has some hidden answer because, dear brothers and sisters, all the problems today we are going through or what we will be going through till the day of rapture. Everything is answered in the scripture. It's just that we need to know how to dig in the scripture and not through our power or mind or intellect. That should be guided by the spirit of God. That's what, dear brothers and sisters, that's the realm. Every single day, me and my family... We live in, dear brothers and sisters. Life has problems. Life is hard. Life is tough. That's all true, dear brothers and sisters. But Messiah has given us the power, which is the power which Messiah has been resurrected from death. Dear brothers and sisters, we have every single day, we stand at the crossroads, we have choices to make. Whether God has one question every single day for you and me, that whether he will give us 
some problems or whatever it is God allowed, whatever attacks or whatever it is, He will look at us and see whether we trust God enough that He will come through today for me. And that's the every single day-to-day -day thing, dear brothers and sisters. That's not like a one-time thing. Because when we exercise our physical muscles, that's how it becomes powerful, right? So that's the same phenomena for our spiritual muscles. When we exercise, when our faith is being exercised, when we are tested, that's how we become stronger in God. That's designed uh, for us to become stronger, dear brothers and sisters. So coming back to worship, as we were men mentioning about the scriptures, sometimes let's, let's take a look at three things which worship is not sometimes which we might, the enemy might make us think. Three things. Worship is not singing songs which we like in the sense the ones which makes us feel good. In that case, we are worshipping our feelings, what we like or dislike. Number two, worship is not just spending some quiet time at home because it helps us focus and have a better day. In that case, we are worshipping ourselves as it makes our day better. Number three, Worship is not just going to church on Sunday mornings because it is expected out of us. In that case, we worship others' opinions. Dear brothers and sisters, it is so, so very crucial to every single day to always examine the ulterior motives why we worship God. Because our adversary is always out there to deceive us, to contaminate our thoughts and steer us away from Messiah. While we are in his presence, yes, while we are in his presence, the enemy will try to throw one, some or the other form of distraction so that we can be away from him. Because when we are in one accord, in truth and in spirit, in Messiah, there is deliverance, there is fullness of joy, there is every answer to our problems, dear brothers and sisters. That's how Messiah works. Sometimes it's not a direct answer to a problem, but that's how Messiah works. If we see when before the ascension, before ascension, when Messiah was going, then also the disciples asked, like, Lord, what is the time of your coming? When are you going to set the kingdom? And here they had their own questions and everything which they had to run to because Jesus was leaving. And we see the answer, I believe in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, we see the answer. Messiah doesn't answer them. Messiah says, wait till the power of God, the spirit of God will come and strengthen you. Messiah's answers are different, dear brothers and sisters, but it's from a different dimension. It is an answer which is not answering one question, but maybe which will be, maybe in future we might have 10 more different questions. But through Messiah's answer, our past, present and future questions are already answered. We see the same thing when Messiah, when Messiah is being confronted that whom should we pay the test? Should we pay taxes to Caesar? He doesn't answer yes or no. He just takes a coin there. And he keeps on going. And um, that in itself is a good study to do that. But coming back, dear brothers and sisters. So, as a matter of fact, as we, as the enemy tries to distract us, we, it might be worthwhile, dear brothers and sisters, definitely be worthwhile your time to track down the word worship across the scriptures from Genesis through Revelation. I mean, due to the interest of time, we would be more than happy to provide it, but due to the interest of time, dear brothers and sisters, we won't be able to do it. There are hundreds of them, and it's not hard to find it out. It's just you need to, please do get some loan time with God, which the enemy doesn't want you to do that, but you want to fight that initial battle and get in his presence and take your strong concordance or however you want to do it and track it down. The word worship, there will be a, about, I don't know how many, but there are, yes, so a few for across from Genesis to Revelation, there are a few scriptures, maybe some hundreds. But it's worthwhile taking a note of it every single day. To read perhaps two or three scriptures which is noted there, dear brothers and sisters. However, your time poem is, dear brothers and sisters, we want to not just read the word of God, but want to be absorbed, want to be doing a scholastic reading, a devotional reading, and be using it. 
we want to keep our minds transformed and renewed dear brothers and sisters that will only happen through the word of God as a matter of fact if we study if the law leads you to do a study of the word worship across the scriptures the first time I believe it appears in the Bible is Genesis Genesis chapter 22 and hopefully we all can recall Genesis chapter 22 Akita where God calls Abraham so that he needs to take his son Isaac to sacrifice and Abraham listens obeys and goes and takes Isaac for sacrifice and then we of course we all know that on the hill finally when Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac then God said stop but what happened on that same hill 2000 years later another father gave his own son to butchery and that's the very reason today I can speak that's the very reason today we are here that's the very reason today that we can feel the presence of God because it's the spirit of God which keeps us together dear brothers and sisters on that same hill Messiah was slaughtered for you and me so that we can be redeemed as a matter of fact I believe the last time the word worship occurs is it's in Revelation chapter 22 the last chapter of the Bible Revelation chapter 22 verse 9 when the angel was telling John not to worship the angels but to worship God it's also interesting dear brothers and sisters to know that the word love the word love for the first time for the first time it appears in Genesis chapter 22 as well the word love first time appears in Genesis chapter 22 verse 2 the word worship appears in Genesis chapter 22 verse 5 for the first time and scholars make a big deal out of it of course the law the law of first mention or things alike they talk about I mean if the law leaves you can read about what it is it's not essential of course but isn't that interesting dear brothers and sisters that the word worship and word love first time it is mentioned in the Bible is where we see in Akita of course where Abraham is going to sacrifice his son in the same place the word love and worship is mentioned does it convey does it convey us something today that's how worship and love are related dear brothers and sisters they walk hand in hand then out of the love we have in our hearts for Messiah we adore him we revere him we worship him we don't come to worship him because we need things because we need deliverance of course those are things those are byproducts but that Messiah will take care because in the Sermon of Mount, I believe Matthew chapter 6, Messiah tells us that our Heavenly Father already knows what we need. So there is no need to worry about, dear brothers and sisters. We don't come to worship Him because of certain things. We come to worship Him. As Genesis 22, we see word worship and love are together. As a matter of fact, Messiah Himself tells us all across the Gospels that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So dear brothers and sisters, without getting into further talking, dear brothers and sisters, today let us, let us just start with a word of prayer. Let us get in Messiah's presence. Let us pour out our hearts before Him today as we worship Him. Let us petition to Him to renew our minds as we read the scriptures. Let us proclaim to the King of kings and the Lord of lords that He and He alone is worthy of all the praises, of all the honor, of all the glory. So today let's start with a word of prayer, shall we, Anna? Yes. Shall we, David? Yes. All right. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather together today in your holy name, Lord, we stand on your word of Matthew 18, 20. Lord, you said that two or three gather in my name, that I will be there in the midst of them, Father, today at this time. Please, please do pour out your spirit on each one of us, on our dear fellow brethren, on our dear... Brothers and sisters who have stumbled onto this video, help them, Lord, once again. Pour out your spirit and help them, Lord, to understand that how real you are, how true you are, how every single day you want to talk to each one of us, how interested you are in our lives. And today, Lord, once again, at this time, Lord, give us, give us the love of commitment that Paul had towards his spiritual family as we see all across the Pauline epistles. And help us today, Lord, once again to keep ourselves into perspective, realizing that our flesh, we ourselves, are our biggest enemy. 
Father, today, please do give us the depth of resource, humility that we may exhibit and exalt our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. May our prayers be a petition, Lord, for humility rather than a substitute for it. Help us, Lord, today to take every thought captive and acknowledge our ownership of each negative thoughts. And today, Lord, please do draw us to repentance so that we can forgive others where we feel we have been wronged. Heavenly Father, today, once again, we pray, Lord, that for each one of us, for our dear fellow brethren, our dear brothers and sisters, please do give us a thirst and unending hunger for you and your word. And Lord, keep us free from the bondage of legalism or the false comfort of rules. Also, Father, today, please do equip us with the full armor for the warfare that we are engaged in in these end of the end of the end moments. And please do help each one of us, our dear fellow brethren, our dear brothers and sisters, to see clearly just where you want us to be. And help us, Lord, to relish the comfort and security that place assures us. Father, help us today to once again to measure everything, especially our credentials, by the cross and not by our flesh. May our own resume reflect gold, silver and precious stones and not the quest for wood, hay and stubble. Help us, Lord, today to focus with a singleness of devotion to our Messiah that we may not be beguiled or blinded by the wiles of the enemy or the glitter of this temporal world. Heavenly Father, once again, please do keep us diligent towards false teachers and treacherous doctrines. Yet, Lord, let us never abandon our first love. Help us, Lord, what you had. The report card for the church of Ephesus. The first church in Revelation chapter 2. Help us today, Lord, never to abandon our first love. For we do love you, Father. Today, help us to see you ever more clearly and thus love you even more, Lord. And Heavenly Father, today, as we read the scriptures together with our dear fellow brethren, and worship you together with our dear brothers and sisters. Lord, please do open all our hearts and minds, to, hearts and lives and minds to your word and your words to our hearts and lives and help us today to worship you in truth and in spirit. All this we pray in the holy, mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, the line from the tribe of Judah and the root of David, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior indeed. Amen, amen. and amen, amen and amen. Right, dear brothers and sisters, today the Lord has been leading us to take a look, a deeper look at Psalm 34. So today we will be reading Psalm 34, dear brothers and sisters. Once again, we will be using our New King James Version, of course. And dear brothers and sisters, we do encourage you. I mean, please do feel free to, if you want to use your own Bible. That's great. If you want to follow along, that's great. But please do let the Spirit of God guide you, dear brothers and sisters. Whatever valley you are in, wherever you are in, whatever the bluff the enemy is trying to throw at you, all the doubts, denials, lies, and deceit of the enemy is going to diminish when we come in his presence. So let the Spirit of God talk to you as we go through Psalm 34. As a matter of fact, Psalm 34 is basically a wisdom psalm, a psalm of praise. Which is written for to this very day, to the day, dear brothers and sisters. It's a matter of fact, it's, it's a devotional psalm where we can see the evidence of the paradigm, paradigm, the paradigm of devotion. We see all the, all the tenses of devotion here through this psalm. We see the past, present and future tense. In the past, we see through this psalm how God used it for King David. In the present, we see how God is using it for us if we let him, of course. And the future tense of this devotion is how God will use it for his own people, the Israelites, in future. Of course, and that will happen after the time of the fullness of Gentiles, as Paul was telling us in Romans chapter 11, verse 25. So jumping into Psalm 34 is basically another acrostic psalm. And I believe as our Psalm 25, Psalm 37, Psalm 111... 112, 119, of course, we know that, and 145. And this acrostic psalm has the Hebrew letter Vav omitted. It doesn't have, and it has an extra letter Pe added at the beginning of verse 22. And then it's all in Hebrew, the acrostic psalm. I mean, for each verse, it's the acrostic, you can see that. And the title of the psalm connects this with King David's dangerous experience with the Philistines at Gath and it's recorded in, I believe, 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 10 through 22. 
after which King David fled to the cave of Adullam. The Philistine king is called Achish in 1 Samuel 21, but the dynastic title of Philistine kings was always Abimelech, as is referred in this psalm. So, this psalm has basically 22 verses, and the structure of this psalm can be classified into four basic instructions for us to the very day to avoid our very difficult situations. So, the first three verses calls for bless the Lord. The verses 4 through 8 is to seek the Lord. Verses 9 through 16 is to fear the Lord. Verses 17 through 22 is trust the Lord. These are the four basic instructions to the day to avoid whatever valley you are in, dear brothers and sisters. So today let us jump in Psalm 34. Psalm 34, the happiness of those who trust in God. A psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech who drove him away and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Dear brothers and sisters, I repeat once again. Verse 3, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Today is the day, dear brothers and sisters. Let us magnify his holy name. Let us exalt his name together because he and he alone is worthy, dear brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, these are the first three verses. Have you noted? If you're following along, if you have your Bible open, if you have noticed, dear brothers and sisters, the verbs bless, boast, magnify, and exalt. These are used in the first three verses. And the first three verses are talking about to bless the Lord. Bless, boast, magnify and exalt. That's what we ought to do, dear brothers and sisters. As a matter of fact, the name Lord is used, I believe, 16 times in this psalm. Continuing to verse 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. That's an open challenge to any one who is covered by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, that if we sought the Lord, King David says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears, dear brothers and sisters. We don't put a condition there. We don't put a time frame there. We don't put any conditional requirement for those kind of scriptures. The Bible says when we sought the Lord, he will hear us. He will deliver us from all whatever we are going through. So let's hold on to that. Moving on to verse 5. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed the poor man cried out and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles the angel of the lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them oh taste and see the lord is good blessed is the man who trusts in him Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Dear brothers and sisters, verses 4 through 8 is basically a threefold witness. Threefold witness, verses 4 through 8. We see Messiah saves. In verse 7, we see he keeps. In verse 8, we see he satisfy. Oh, taste and see the goodness. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, the goodness of the Lord. And blessed is the man who trusts in him. Dear brothers and sisters, these, the angel of the Lord, as we see in verse 7, it appears, I believe, three times. It, once here, and I believe twice in Psalm 33, verses 5 and 6. And the, in this scripture, in these verses, 4 through 8, it basically is telling us the angel of the Lord is believed by good scholars to be the pre-incarnate form, pre-incarnate Christ, pre-incarnate Messiah, the Old Testament Messiah, basically. We see a lot in the book of Zechariah as well, when we go there. Here, the basic point is, without getting into the scholastic debate and everything, the basic point is, Messiah is always with us, as we, Messiah promised us in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, and Matthew chapter 28 verse 20. And we see the same promises in Deuteronomy chapter 31. That God will always be with us. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him. And delivers them. We see dear brothers and sisters. 
A blessing here is promised. We look for Lord's blessings all the time. King David says here, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Dear brothers and sisters, do you trust him today? Then you are blessed already. Divinely blessed because you trust him. Why? Because Psalm chapter 34 verse 8 tells us, You are blessed already. Let's rejoice. You trust in him. You and me trust in him. We are blessed already. No matter what the enemy is telling you and me. It's a lie from the pit of hell. We are blessed because Messiah says so. Because we have put our trust in Messiah and Messiah alone. Continuing to verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no one to those who fear him. Dear brothers and sisters, fear is a call to all wonder, worship and reverence. As we see in Pro the Proverbs chapter 1, it begins with that. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 talks about it. To fear God is to respond to him in piety and obedience. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no one to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Come you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see God. Dear brothers and sisters, in these four verses, verse, I believe, no, five verses, verse 8, 10, 11, and 12. Four verses, as a matter of fact. The word good has been used four times in verse 8, 10, 11, and 12. That in itself tells us about the goodness of our God. Keep your tongue from evil, continuing to verse 13. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Dear brothers and sisters, a similar version, seek peace and pursue, depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Peter has a similar version, I believe in 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 10 through 12. And we do encourage you, dear brothers and sisters, to please do go back, dig in the scriptures as the Lord leads you. Please dig in the scriptures and see what the Lord has through you, all these cross references. Continuing to verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Dear brothers and sisters, verses 17, 18 and 19 should be our take home verses today. The Lord says the righteous cry out and the Lord hears. I repeat, the righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Whatever trouble you are in, cry out to him, dear brothers and sisters. The Lord will hear. Pour out your heart today. Today is the day. Today is the day. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. How many troubles, dear brothers and sisters? All their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Go to him broken today. Go to him. Surrender. Surrender to him as we sing today. Now is the time, dear brothers and sisters. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Dear brothers and sisters, there are so many days. There are so many days, so many days that this is the only verse which holds me and my family, dear brothers and sisters, as if you had gotten a chance to hear to how our miracles, what Messiah is doing in our lives, our testimony, which the Lord led us to put, this is what we do. This is what God has called us to do. And there are days which are hard. But dear brothers and sisters, Messiah knows what he is doing in each one of us. I don't understand. I don't know. Me and my family, none of us know what tomorrow holds for us. And that's the truth. There is no hypocrisy here. We don't know what tomorrow holds. But we know one thing that who holds that tomorrow? Because many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord will deliver us. Messiah will deliver. Anna, Messiah will deliver David. Messiah will deliver my wife and me. And each one of us, whoever is covered by his precious blood, each one of us who comes to him brokenhearted, each one of us who cries out to him, he will deliver. That's his promise, dear brothers and sisters. And that's a staggering, staggering, staggering promise. Continuing. To verse 20, he guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. As a matter of fact, this is the 
prophecy which Messiah fulfilled, which we see John in John chapter 19, verse 36. As a matter of fact, you can read verses 33 through 36 to understand the prophecy being fulfilled. We are not going to get into that today, but if you're more than welcome, dear brothers and sisters, to take a look and understand how the prophecies are working out and being fulfilled. Continuing to verse 21. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those, the Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Dear brothers and sisters, as the psalm ends with such comforting words, King David says, The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. As a matter of fact, Paul has a very similar scripture which resonates, I believe. Let me pull that up real quick. I believe it's 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. Yes, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. Paul says, For to this end, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. So dear brothers and sisters, the Lord redeems the soul of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Praise God, praise God, praise God, dear brothers and sisters today. As Anna and David sings for us, as we sing together, dear brothers and sisters, as we once again, Come in His presence and glorify Him, Lord. Pour in presence of our Messiah. Pour out your heart in front of Messiah. Give it all. Surrender it all your days. Every single thing. As David has the scripture up on screen for us. As Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, dear brothers and sisters. None of us can do that. That's why Paul is telling, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, which is described in Romans chapter 1, verses, Romans chapter, verses 1 through 11. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter 1, chapters 1 through 8 will describe it because 9 through 11 is the trilogy for Israel's past, present, and future. But it, that's what it is. That by the mercies of God today, let us offer everything, every single being. And let us sing and let us exalt Him and glorify Him together today. Because He and He alone is worthy of all our praises, of all the honor, of all the glory. And you can, please go ahead. Anna and David. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, we just praise you today, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
you my life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, to the name above every single name of our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Dear brothers and sisters, Peter says in Acts 4.12 that there is no other name given under heaven and earth or under earth through which we can obtain salvation. It's in Messiah through his precious blood. And Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 through 11 tells us that there is a day appointed which we see in Acts 17 verse 31. There is a day appointed. One day every knee has to bow down in heaven, on earth and under earth. And one day every tongue shall confess that our Lord, our Messiah, our soul sustainer, our bread giver, our all in all is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And the name above every single name, dear brothers and sisters, today if you haven't gotten a chance, please offer every single thing. Lay them down, whatever. If your plate is full, he knows he will meet you where you are. Lay them down, come in his presence. Help him. Help, help yourself today. To understand that I cannot make it. We don't have the strength. We cannot make it without his strength. As the Bible says in Psalm 73 verses 23 through 26. Nevertheless I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterward receive me in glory. For whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Dear brothers and sisters, today as we end, let's claim on Isaiah 41.10 and hold on to the promise of Isaiah 41.10 as we are in the end of the end of the end moments. Let us glorify him before our faith becomes sight here. In the end moments, last minutes before our faith becomes sight, now is the time to glorify Him. Now is the time to exalt Him. Because those who trust in Him are already blessed. Oh, taste, taste and see the goodness of our Messiah. Blessed is He who trusts in Him. Let's hold on today, dear brothers and sisters, to Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. And Isaiah says, Fear not, for I am with you. Isaiah says, and Isaiah 41, 10. The God is telling us, Messiah is telling today that fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, dear brothers and sisters. We once again thank you for worshipping with us, for reading the scriptures with us, for having a fellowship together. Let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves as is the manner of some as the bible is telling us in hebrews chapter 10 verses 23 through 25 let's not worry about let us not our surroundings our circumstances our situations our attacks our ailments define us let messiah and messiah alone define us dear brothers and sisters because it's his precious blood it's his precious blood which has given you and me this opportunity which has set us free. And if the Son has set us free, then we are free indeed today. Let us pray together as we end to set our feet on the rock which is higher than us. On the rock which is always going to be higher than us. And let's end with a word of prayer. Shall we? David? Yes. You can go ahead, please. My peace, Lord, can you bring us out in your presence, Lord? And I pray for the people who are watching us, Lord. Bless them, Lord, and help them to be near and under you, Lord. In your mighty name, I rebuke the spirit of every evil, the spirit of destruction, deception, division, and especially all those evil spirits coming at them, Lord, and stopping them from being ready for your return, Lord. And so, sir, to tell the Holy Spirit in your next time, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much, David. Could you please also pray for us, Anna? Yes. You can go ahead, please. Lord Jesus, once again, I thank you, Lord, for the promise, Lord, that we are blessed if we trust in you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to hold on to your promises, Lord. 
Help us, Lord, to trust in you, Lord. And Lord Jesus, once again, bless us as we go forth from here and fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And bless our viewers, Lord, and help us to worship you in whatever we do, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, dear brothers and sisters, once again. And may Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless each and every one of you abundantly for all your endeavors in Messiah. Amen and amen and amen.